hi, my name is Paul. I'm the mechanical engineer here at SparkFun. I started about a year ago. I run all the equipment down in the mech shop, uh, anything from the CNC to the uh, vertical mill you see behind me. We have band saws, we have table saws, miter saws, anything mechanical people come down here and get my help for. So for my first project, I decided to build a pan and tilt rig for a camera, which I like to call the Spin Master 4000. Being somewhat of an amateur videographer, I thought it would be cool to have a way to get cool panning and tilting shots at the same time. First we'll go over some of the parts that's in it. Um, it uses our 200 count quadrature encoder, a continuous rotation servo, it uses our robotic pan tilt arm and a couple of custom cut acrylic gears that I made on our laser cutter. And there's also an LCD screen and buttons to set the parameters for the filming. So using the left and right button on the back, we can adjust the camera to the left and the right. By flipping open the viewfinder, I can get the shot and the angle I need to start with and hit the set button. That will set the start point for the film. Next, you rotate it to where you want it to end and set the pan and tilt again and hit set. Lastly, you set the amount of time you want it to take. And this is in seconds, anywhere from five to however many seconds you want. And then it will interpolate between the start point and the end point and give you a nice smooth motion between them. So to start this project, I grabbed the parts that I already had, such as the encoders, the servos, and the LCD screen, and I drew those up in Creo. Once I had those parts, I knew I could build the enclosure around them. So it's important to get the parts you have first and then fit them together to see what, what you have left to build around. Typically, when a new product comes in, I'll design it on the computer, send it off to manufacturers and get samples back. And I wanted to show how it's useful to prototype things digitally first before you dive right into building and how that can be beneficial. I'd like to give just a quick overview of Creo to anyone who's not familiar with 3D drafting programs. So this is our drafting window. We have the top, right, and front planes, and this is where we'll draw our 2D sketches. So in order to draw anything in 3D, first we have to draw it in 2D and then extrude it, stretch it, or expand it out into three dimensions. So for a quick example, I'm going to draw the SparkFun glass off of the website. So first I'm going to start on the top plane, and I'm going to create a new sketch, and I'm going to draw a circle that represents the very top of the glass which in this case is about 3.4 inches. So I'm going to make a circle, I'm going to set it to 3.4 inches, and that's all for this one. Now I'm going to create a new sketching plane, and I'm going to offset it 6.8 inches from the top. That's the overall height of the glass. So when I create that new plane, select it, I'm going to create another sketch that represents the bottom of the glass, which is about 2.4 inches. create a circle, make it 2.4 inches, and hit OK. Next, we want to tell the computer that we want to loft these two drawings together. So we need to create a line that connects them. So I'll choose either the front or right plane, create a sketch, and draw a line that connects the top circle to the bottom circle. top to bottom and hit OK. So here's the skeleton of our cup. We're going to use what's called a sweet blend and that means it's going to blend one of our sketches to the other one following this trajectory. So I'll choose sweet blend and this is my trajectory I've chosen. chosen. Now I'm going to choose my sketches so I'll choose the top sketch to the bottom sketch and you can see that it's created our glass of course, glasses aren't solid, so we need to shell this out using the shell command. So what that does it is, is it hollows out your 3D object. So I'll choose that, and then I'm going to pick the top of it to tell it that I want it to cut that off. And the thickness is about 0.1 inches. Now we can get rid of our sketches, just so we don't have to look at them. We'll add some rounds to the inside and outside of the glass the bottom inside and the bottom outside. And since the glass is made of glass, we'll change the appearance to make it clear. 
And there's that glass, minus the Spark Fun logo. All right, like I had mentioned before, I first drew all the parts I needed in 3D. So up here we have the LCD screen I used, the 4x16. This is the gear for the servo. This is the gear that goes on the main uh, shaft that holds the camera. And this is the gear that goes on the encoder. This is a servo, the continuous rotation one that drives the main, the main pan function. This is the tilt mechanism that we sell that controls the tilt of the camera. This is the Arduino, this is the encoder, and this is the bearing. And so what I've done is brought them all into one assembly, and that allows me to see the physical size of all the parts in relation to all the other parts. And so when they're all in there, we can unexplode this view, and it'll rebuild it as I had it. And now you can see exactly how everything's going to line up with each other. If we look back at the exploded view, these pockets that are down in here, um, those I did inside this assembly after I brought in the parts. And I'll explain what I mean in just a second, but it's a really useful tool. So we'll be using the Arduino in this example. So the Arduino is sitting here on the wooden plate, but there aren't any holes for mounting. And so say I wanted to add those holes. Well, what we could do is open the, the base and I could measure an Arduino and, and then add the holes in here and that would work okay but there's a lot of, there's a, a much better way to do it so if we go back to the assembly and I click on the base and I activate it that's telling the computer that I'm, I want to work on that piece I want to I want to modify it so what I'm going to do is create an extrusion on the top of the base And what I'm going to do is I'm going to reference the holes that are on the Arduino. I'm not going to use that one because there's already a pocket there. So now these holes are referenced and that's telling the computer that um, I'm going to be drawing something involving these holes so it will help me snap to those that size. So I'll draw three mounting holes and hit OK and now it's extruding them which isn't what I want um, I want to cut something away we'll say maybe 0 0.2 inches and then I will flip them and use the cut command and hit OK and now we can see that the holes have been added right where the Arduino lines up so now there's no guessing where those holes are going to be they're exactly where they are in this assembly so if we go back to the base we can see that it's updated it and added those holes in. Here's my assembly. I've left out the screws on the top of the acrylic so I can show you how we bring a part in. So we'll start by hitting the assemble button and then these are called screw short. Okay so I'll open that and that brings in the screw to the assembly and I'll turn on the the, uh, the axes so it puts a center line on anything that's a circle. So what I want to do is I want to take the center of this screw and I want to line it up with the center of this hole and that's called a coincidence and so what that's done is it's aligned the screw with that hole but notice this, the screw can still move in any direction vertically which we want to constrain that too so what I'm going to do is look at the bottom of the screw head and select that and I'm going to coincidence that to the top of the acrylic and now that screw is stuck in there and if you'll notice I can't move it anymore because it's constrained to that exact spot and then instead of importing another screw and doing that again I can just select the screw hit the repeat button select my two constraints and now very easily I can just click the two constraints that I used previously and I'll add in a screw for each one of these holes And there we have it, the completed assembly. Another feature is that we can constrain things to axes, but we can make them so they can still rotate. So like these gears in real life, they would be able to rotate. So we can grab one of these gears and drag it and it'll spin. We can drag this one here and it'll spin. 
and this one here and it'll spin and that's cool but in real life those gears would interact with each other and so there's another application we can use to do that and it's called mechanism and so when we open mechanism you can see that these little arrows here and those are telling us that the computer knows that that those um, those are axes that can spin and so what we need to do is create a gear because these are gears and so I'll select one of these and I need to enter in the diameter which is 1.3 inches and then I'll select the gear that it's driving which is this one and the diameter is 2 inches and I'll OK that and so now this gear here is driving this gear and so now I want to tell the computer also that this main gear here is going to be driving the gear on the encoder so I'm going to create another gear I'm going to select this one and again the diameter is 2 inches and for the second gear I'm going to select this one and the diameter is 1.43 inches and I'll hit OK and now when I grab one of these gears you can see that they're all interacting with each other and I realize that you know these gears are intersecting in somewhat of an impossible way but if I had taken more time to align them better it would look quite accurate but generally this is okay because it's just simulating motion for f the final step in making this automation we can create a motor so of course the servo motor the continuous rotation one here is our motor so I'm going to create a servo motor and I'm going to choose this axis and I'm going to set up the profile for this <clears throat> so there's three different options we can have position which will just hold the motor in one specific spot and not move it we can have velocity which will rotate the gear at a certain, velo a certain constant velocity and we can have an acceleration which accelerates at a certain you know in a function so right here we're going to choose the velocity function and I'm just going to set it at a constant rate of 100 I don't know what units but it's going to be constantly spinning at spinning at 100 units so I'll apply that hit OK and now we're going to run this simulation up here and we'll set it to run for 20 seconds when we hit run you'll notice that it spins it and you get a good idea of how this entire mechanism will work so that's the basics of an assembly and creating mechanisms to link them all together to see how they'd interact. So that concludes my episode of Engineering Roundtable. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to post them. And check us out again in two weeks for the next episode.